Hello and welcome back to the Product Pup, where we talk about all things tech, business, startups, ideas, products, and everything related. Today we are talking about the technology skills a product manager needs to be successful. There are plenty of successful product managers who are non-technical. However, you still need to be analytical, data-driven, and critical in your thinking to make decisions. I'm gonna address some common questions before we start. Does a product manager need to know how to code? No. Does a product manager need to have a computer science degree? No. Does a product manager need to come from a technical background? No. I'm very passionate about enabling non-technical people to work and thrive in the tech environment. I think it's absolutely possible. We see lots of examples of it today, but it can come across a little bit intimidating. So today I'm going to share with you five things that you should invest in and improve your knowledge in, in order to be successful working with your technical counterparts like engineering, as well as being able to influence your stakeholders and just being able to make better decisions. Okay, number one is Excel or your choice of spreadsheeting tool. I guarantee you that at some point in your product career, you will need to open up a pretty large Excel file and somehow make a decision or figure out what kind of story this data is telling you. Excel is a very handy tool for you to get used to as a PM. You might use Excel to filter through some customer data that will help you to make a decision. You might use it to filter through data that will help you to identify a trend in that data. Whatever it is, you're gonna have to work with pretty large sets of data and oftentimes you're gonna have to combine that data into one as well. Specific things in Excel that you should get familiar with are one, filtering that data which sounds very straightforward, but you can get quite advanced with filtering depending on exactly what you're looking for. Secondly, pivot tables. Pivot tables are your best friend for creating different views based on the data that you have. And number three, which is my favorite and something that I use all the time, a V lookup. Number two is SQL, which is structured query language. All SQL is is a language that allows you to write a query that will then obtain data from a database. For really, really large sets of data and for everything that your applications and your software is running off, that will be a database. So oftentimes you will need to find something that is in the database and you don't want to rely on your engineering team to always have to retrieve that for you. With SQL queries, you can be as specific or as broad as you like. So. If you need to find some information about a particular customer, you can specify their name and exactly what you need to know about them. On the other hand, maybe you just need to pull all of the customers that meet a specific criteria. You can put that into your SQL query and a list of results will be returned to you. I use SQL to run some automatic reports so I don't have to constantly go and query something every day or every week, but I have a query that I write that runs on a periodic basis and then it populates another report that I have. SQL is very easy to learn. You do only really need the basics. Anything beyond the basics, if you're trying to write some kind of advanced query, you can honestly just Google it. So you've played around with spreadsheets, you've queried the database using SQL. At some point, you're probably gonna have to make an actual decision using this data. This is something that you can refine your skill over time. It's not something that I can recommend you just go and learn. The main thing to remember is you can present data in different ways. So if you're not able to make sense of something, try presenting it in a different way. Try different types of visuals, different types of graphs, different types of tables. Also think about the ultimate question that you are trying to answer with this data and also think about the audience if you are presenting this data to someone else. I think the most important thing when it comes to interpreting the data is you're going to use your judgment. You know a lot more about the product and the future direction of the product and your customers and the competitive nature of your industry and the company as a whole. So use the data to inform your decision, but also keep those other things in mind. 
Number four is to understand your product and software technology stack. A technology stack is a combination of the tools and applications and technologies that your software is built on. And I think it's really important for a product manager to have a general sense of how their product is built. What database does your product use? Where is your product and code hosted? Are you using AWS? Are you using Azure? Are you hosting it on your own premises? All of these things are quite useful to know. Still not convinced that you should learn about your tech stack? Think of it like having a business. There are certain parts of your business that you will know really well, but other parts you will delegate to someone else that can do better but it's probably useful for you to have some idea of what they're doing. Overall, it's just gonna make you a better business owner if you have an idea of what's going on in every part of your business. So as a product manager, you're ultimately responsible for your product. And while you're not gonna make those super technical decisions, it is useful for you to know what some of those technical things are, because again, it just completes the picture of what your product is. Number five is understanding how your product actually works. So what I recommend here is getting your engineering team to draw for you a very simple high level process flow that explains exactly what happens when a user is doing something. So if your product is an app, for example, when someone opens the app and logs in, when they click on a button that gives them recommendations for a restaurant, when each of those things happen, get your engineering team to explain to you in a visual way what is happening behind the scenes. By understanding how your product works, you are going to invest in having a better relationship with your engineering team because you're spending that time with them to appreciate what they really care about and that is how something is built. I think this is a really great way, especially if you are new to the team, if you're taking on a new product or if you're new to a, a company, Invest that time with the engineering team and get them to explain to you how things work. And this also gives you an opportunity to ask a lot of dumb questions. Number six is a general suggestion, and that is to keep a notebook or a doc filled with the technical terms that you have learned. I recommend putting in a brief description in your own words, uh, some pros and cons if they apply to this thing, and an example of how this concept is used in your product. This is something I started doing a few years ago as I started to work on more technical products and this has been an absolute lifesaver for me. I still find myself in engineering meetings sometimes where certain terms are thrown around and instead of Googling them, which I will do for a new terminology, I'll actually go back to my notes and remind myself how that term relates to my specific product. And that's it for this video. Thank you so much if you got this far. I really do appreciate it. Don't forget to check out my TikTok. It is called The Product Pup, and that is where I post daily videos all about tech, business, product, and startups, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.